I think we as a woodworking community need to have a serious conversation, a gritty conversation. This may rub some people the wrong way. It may come off as somewhat abrasive. All right, enough of the grading jokes. We as a woodworking community need to discuss grit, specifically on sandpaper and sharpening stones. So what is grit? Well, it's a lot of stuff, but uh, basically it's the bumps on sandpaper. There's plenty of other places online where you can go and learn about the different types of grit and the particles used in the paper or cloth on the back. Specifically, I'm talking about the size of the grit on the sandpapers. There are two standards, generally, uh, the U.S. standard and the European standard, but they're not the same. For instance, this is a U.S. standard 320 grit sandpaper. It's wet dry sandpaper. This is a uh, European standard sandpaper, and it begins with the letter P on the front. They are not the same. Both systems use a numbering system that try to describe the size of the abrasive particles on the paper or the substrate or whatever. Each system describes its own size in microns for each grid of sandpaper. So we're talking about all the little bumps on here are a certain size. So with the American standard, a 320 grit sandpaper has an average size abrasive of around 36 microns. The European standard average grit size is 46 microns, which is 10 microns bigger than the Americans. So this is actually rougher or more coarse than the American 320. I mean, they're pretty close. 10 microns isn't much, but this is uh, still coarser than an American 280 grit sandpaper. So I've compiled the spreadsheet, the link down below, that lists the American standard and European standard sandpaper grits, and it puts them on a list of average abrasive size and kind of goes all the way down from the coarsest to the finest. So you may be familiar with the MicroMesh sanding pads. They have their own proprietary grit system. And it's a little confusing because it's completely different than anything with any of the other standards, with the American or European standards. So the coarsest grit of the MicroMesh is labeled at 1500 grit. So does that mean you sand up to 1000 grit with regular sandpaper and then switch over to the 1500 grit here? No. This 1500 grit sanding pad has the same abrasive size as a US standard 360 grit sandpaper. So if you go up to 1000 grit with regular sandpaper or with like auto detailing sandpaper and you go to this, you're actually roughing it up. You're taking away some of that polish. So you could sand up to 320 with regular sandpaper and then start your micromesh schedule. It even says in the instructions to stop at 320 and then start with your micromesh there. Again, my spreadsheet also has micromesh listed at the average abrasive size as well. Now in the sharpening world, things get a little bit more confusing. I kind of follow the uh, Paul Sellers of Wood by Wright system where I got, where I go through successive stones and I drop it at the end. I kind of follow along with Wood by Wright and I use the DMT diamond plates and I go from coarse to fine to extra fine. Paul Sellers goes with an Easy Lap system, a different manufacturer called Easy Lap, and he also uses the coarse fine, but it's called super fine instead of extra fine. Now there's slight differences in there, but they're fairly close, usually within about 10 to 15 microns of each other. The Easy Lap product tends to be coarser than the DMT stones, but it'll get you there in the end. When you strop with the green strop, it kind of evens everything out. So Rob Cosman tends to use a uh, combination trend stone, which is 1,000 on one side, 300 on the other side. And then he moves to a Shapton 16,000 stone. So we've got vague descriptions of the grit on these diamond stones. We've got coarse, fine, extra fine. Okay, what does that mean? And the trend stone that Rob Cosman uses has a 300 on one side and a 1,000 on the other side. But none of these really adhere to any type of you know, the American standard grit system or the European standard grit system. So it gets very difficult to know what you're using when you start mixing systems. For instance, Rob Cosman uses the trend and then he goes to a Shapton 16,000 grit glass stone. Because all of Shapton's glass stones all tell you exactly how big their average uh, abrasive particle is on those stones. All of them. Now with the diamond stones, they have the very vague fine, coarse, medium, super fine, extra fine, whatever you want to say. So why does it matter that we know what grits these are? I have a very cheap plane here. This is a great neck, which I think is, I, I don't even know. 
Home Depot maybe, Menards, I don't know. But the iron in it was not very good. It had a, a big uh, hollow right in the center of it and it took forever to sand out. So all I've got here is the DMT coarse stone. And I'm going and I'm going and my fingers are hurting, they're getting black from all the swarf and everything else. And it's just cutting so slow. Well fortunately DMT sells an extra coarse and an extra extra coarse stone. So all I gotta do is get those, right? Well that's you know fifty sixty dollars per stone out of my pocket plus I gotta wait two days for it to be delivered from Amazon or I have to you know get off my big butt drive up to uh, one of the wood stores and find them there and then bring it back home and start there. You know that's fine and everything but I, I literally have like just about every grit of sandpaper in my drawer over here. I just have to get up, go over there, grab it, and bring it back. But because these manufacturers are so vague, I don't know what size to go back to. That's where my spreadsheet comes in. The DMT course is 43 microns, and the Easy Lap course is 43 microns. So there's only two micron difference, which works out to about 280 grit on the US standard. So rather than spending an hour doing this, I can go get a 220 grit sandpaper out of my drawer, sand it on there, get it nice flat a lot faster. I can even go back farther to say a 120 or 150 and take off even more, then go to that 220, and then I can come to my stones. But the manufacturers are very, possibly deliberately, hiding that fact so you go buy their stuff rather than going and getting yourself some sandpaper. So talking micron size, I'm going from a 45 micron stone to a 25 micron stone to a 9 micron stone. And then I strop, and the green compound here, the aluminum oxide, is half a micron. That 16,000 grit Shapton stone that Rob Cosman uses is just slightly less than one micron, and this is half a micron. Is there any difference when you're talking about less than a half a micron? I don't know. But I know that 16,000 grit Shapton stone is about $150, and a full stick of this cost me about 20. Then I had to make a strop for it, which is, uh, I could just use MDF if I wanted to. I don't even have to use the leather on here. Now, Shapton does offer their 30,000 grit stone, and it says right on there that it's 0.49 microns, which is 0.01 micron less than the green compound here. But that 30,000 grit, that 30,000 stone costs $340. $340 for 0 0.01 micron more than this. So generally as a woodworking community, we know woodworking is inherently expensive. There's a, you know, even cheap planes are not that cheap. So we're trying to use, spend our money wisely. So sometimes that means mixing systems together, much like Rob Cosman does with the Trend and the Shapton systems. But manufacturers are very vague, possibly intentionally so, and make it very difficult for us to know how to spend our money and where to spend our money. So please take a look at my spreadsheet with the link down below. It's view only on Google Drive because I don't got a Squarespace sponsor or anything like that, so I don't have an actual website for myself. If you see anywhere that I've made an error or you want me to add some information, please leave a comment down below to do that. And then I, that way I can update it. And as people keep coming back to this video and checking that spreadsheet, it can have more and more accurate information. And really it would be great if we could stop talking about grits and start talking about microns talking about the size of the actual abrasives on each of these systems. That way it's a good apples to apples comparison. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this, you know, hit the buttons down below. And uh, like I said, leave a comment if you see there's anything wrong or needs to be added to my spreadsheet. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.